All right, I figure I'd make a quick video on uh, how to time a VR38 DETT uh, GTR motor. Um, these can be a little bit confusing because you'll see some indicators on the back of the, uh, the cover. Those are not the indicators. That's not correct, so don't try to even go by that. Um, mostly what you're going to be doing is going off of the actual chain lengths and the, um, and the factory chains, and that'll help you out a lot, but these will just be little tips. Um, and forgive my shop, it's pretty loud in here. Okay, so what you want to remember is that on uh, the passenger side, you got two circles, okay? So and you're gonna link those up. Your secondary chain's got the two orange indicators. And then on the back of this sprocket, you'll see a dot, okay? And that's for your single uh, chain link on that side. So that's the other orange link. Um, other things to think about, Whenever you're taking apart your GTR motor off Jump Street, you want to go ahead and indicate, like I did, the actual factory primary chain uh, sprocket indicators on the back of the cover, and don't accidentally wash them things off. This will help you out a lot, just so that you're confident as you go through it. Now, over here on the passenger side, we have the two dots on the exhaust cam sprocket. Now, if you look over here, we have two ovals. So. A lot of times when you're reading the factory service manual literature, it can be semi-confusing. Um, another thing that I do that you're probably not gonna be, yeah, you can sort of see it. So, yeah, and you can actually see the link right there, paint penning. Um, but what I do is I actually will put a mark on just the um, uh, oil pump chain. Uh, it's not really a tensioner more of a guide because uh, it doesn't have a lot of tension but um, I'll put that on there and then that'll help me out as I rotate it so a couple other things um, whenever you go to get this chain on there make sure that your camshaft dowel pins on uh, intake cam and exhaust cam are vertical and there's actually a part on the cylinder head that you'll see there's a little line that's for the most part the general location of where they need to be perhaps you can see it a little bit better over here light in there you see that line there's two vertical lines in the cylinder head intake and exhaust and that's gonna be you can't really see that one but um, that's basically gonna be where you need to get your camshafts lined up so that they're just straight up and then you can sit there and you can slightly manipulate the sprockets um, when you have um, the secondary chain and both of the sprockets in hand and you're installing both of them simultaneously you might need to use a crescent wrench over here on one of your cams to just kind of get it, you know, into a general location. Now, always be careful because uh, bank one over here, uh, these cams like to relax and with a pretty good amount of tension. So always keep a good amount of resistance while you're fooling with that. I prefer to fool with this side more. Um, and the reason being is it's a lot it's a lot more forgiving has a lot less spring back and spring tension so um, the other more important thing that so let's say that you get secondary chains installed you get your primary chain installed but you're having problems either getting it onto the oil uh, the crank sprocket or you're having problems with this guide or getting it around this one so the trick is is what I do is that once all my chain links are linked up, so I'll have an orange indicator. I've rotated this motor about 20 times at this point. I'll have an orange indicator here. I'm sorry, yellow. I'll have a yellow indicator over here on the chain link, okay? And then down here I'll have my orange, right? With that guy right there will actually be way down there. And that kind of tells me that, you know, as far as mechanically timed, it's it's mechanically timed. So I'm not really worried about it. I also don't have hydraulic pressure in any of my tensioners, so you wanna work slow and be kind of careful. So if you're having a problem getting the chain on, the primary chain, onto either the crankshaft or sometimes I'll do weirdo stuff where I'll actually just remove this guide, make sure that you have your tension over here on bank two. If you can get tension on this side of the chain, then you'll have enough slack over here. And a trick that I do is I make sure that that grenade tensioner is all the way back. And then what I do is I unbolt the eight millimeter Allen head for this part of the guide. 
and I'll actually just slide that up in there. And you'll find that that's extremely easy to do. And then you just stick your hardware in and boom, you're done. Um, and then obviously if you're working on a GTR, hopefully you're aware of these oil gallery gasket rupture failures with the paper gasket. Hopefully you're also familiar with upgrading the hardware. Um, I use Allen heads. Uh, so that's pretty much what you need to know. Now, a lot of times like uh, VQ37, uh, uh, like the 370Z VHR motor, I can rotate this engine about 20 times and every one of my primary links on the intake sprockets and the crank will line up. It's not like that for VR38, it's a different life. On these, after 20 rotations, your secondary chains will actually come into full synchronization. So if you're rotating the motor around and it's your first time doing one of these, just keep in mind that only your secondaries will rotate after, I'm sorry, will come into indication after about 20 plus rotations. So um, just something to think about. Uh, and don't be concerned about this chain having a little bit of slack in it that's just part of the design. I don't understand it either. It seems kind of crazy. This engine will spin up to over 1300 horsepower. So just keep in mind that that uh, oil pump chain can be a little bit loose. Uh, so I think that'll probably get most guys going in the right direction on this job.